happy and we're singing and we're colored. Give me a high five. Yo, this is your boy Floor 700. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Fresco. And this is episode five of the podcast, My Brother and Me. Episode five, man. Five we got a straight. few special guests in the building to talk about the topics today. Fresco, you want to introduce them? Absolutely, man. Two very good friends of mine. I've known him for a very long time. First up, we got my boy Cyril. Cyril, what's up with you, player? What's going on, fellas, man? It's a pleasure to be here. Appreciate you coming through, Thanks man. Thanks for coming, man. Thanks for coming. Thanks Second so. guest we got up, y'all know who he is. Man, don't really need an introduction like that. But Ernie Lane, man, what's up, dog? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Hey, bro. hey, <laughs> hey. You you know we fined you for not coming the last time, right? <laughs> yeah, man, I got a fine. You got a fine. It's 20 bucks, bro. 20 bucks. Yeah, all, all, singles. All, right. <laughs> all singles. All singles. We don't want nothing else, man. All right. Straight like that. We got a <laughs> Packed house today, man. We got a packed house. Yo, um, shout out to everybody that's been keeping up with the podcast. Shout out to everybody that's been yes, sir. retweeting yes, and, and sharing the pages amongst your social media friends. We, we really appreciate, appreciate all it. That. We growing, man. Episode one just hit 300 listens. You yes, know what I'm sir. Saying? So that's a big deal. It's, I mean, to hell to me it is. I don't give a damn what y'all yeah, think. Yeah, man. But, um, yo, so what's on the agenda, bro? What you want to get out the we way first? We're definitely going to talk about the police brutality. Mm, Police brutality. I think that just might be the name of this podcast. Yeah, that's a good idea because uh, if you don't know, and if you don't, you've probably been living under a fucking rock. But <laughs> it's been a lot, a lot of action. And not good action going on good in, action in, in, in the country as far as uh, police brutality. And in recent events, brutality towards police. And it just amazes me how people are so dumb. How stupid, how stupid people are. Like, and I, like, I, I just don't get it, so I definitely got to say my piece on that. We got an email. But first off, we're going to get into this email that we Let got. Let find this email real quick. From a guy from folder. Canada. I'm in the wrong Pull folder. that email up. But I want to get y'all take on something I seen. Like, I seen a post where I think a Spanish kid was murdered by the police. But, it's, but the caption read, where is Black Lives Matter? Well, I guess y'all don't care about this. Is it me or do the people not understand what Black Lives Matter means? No, it's every they don't. They don't. What you think, Ernie? You want to go first? You can go, brother. Um, oh, yeah. okay. We were brought to this country and we went through the whole slavery mm. process. Right. We went through segregation. We had all these fights and struggles, civil rights and all this other stuff. And everybody that came after us, everything we fought for, they got a free ride after us. The civil rights struggle, the Black Panthers, all these people we fought for, Spanish people, the Japanese people that they brought over here, the Chinese people that they brought over here, the Spanish people, Puerto Ricans, they all got that free ride off our backs from all those fights we had with these people, mm -hmm. whether it was in the streets or in le um, legislation. So if they saying, oh, um, where's Black Lives Matter, we're the most vocal people in existence. If something happened to us, we're vocal. Black people are the first people up. Every single every time. time. First people. So we're not going to just stand up for any and everybody. You got to you gotta show some kind of fight because we're going to fight loud with you, but you got to put up some kind of fight too. Absolutely. What you think, sir? First and foremost, I just think that at the end of the day, like Ernie just said, we talk a lot, but we don't hit them where it hurts, and that's financially. Mm -hmm. The black community in this country is the only one where we don't control our own communities. Right. You look at any inner city, like – there's outsiders in our communities that run our communities financially, politically. Mm -hmm. We don't really stand together. Mm -hmm. But anything that happens, I'm on the forefront, just yapping. You know what I mean? Like, And there's nothing wrong with that. You got to voice it into ex existence. I definitely but, agree with that. That's exactly what's on my mind, man. We don't pull And my whole thing together. is, right. if something happened to a white person, the white America, you need to stand up for that cause. If something happens to a brown person, a Spanish person, then... Shut up. Y'all need to stand Look, up. Look, if I'm getting jumped, if I'm a black man getting jumped, and you getting jumped too, I I can't fucking help you right now. I'm trying to save my own ass from getting whipped. So if you want to save your ass from getting whipped, you need to stand up and fight. I'm taking on all I can take on right now. You got an issue with whatever's going on with in your personal life? A white guy got shot at a local convenience store, and you feel some kind of way about that? I'm not advocating for people dying any on any level of life. Life is precious. You got to take that. And I'm saying you got to take that seriously. But at the same time, you can't look at us when we're fighting our own battles and you looking and you in the midst of your fight and you looking at us for help. That don't make no damn and sense. And I say I this. Help you, bro. It's a lot of marching going on. But if you're not marching in the right areas, like if you're not affecting the dollars, if you're not shutting down stores, if you're not shutting down malls, 
you're not going to get no results. I think they know by now that they're going to Mars for a few days, and then you're going to go home. Mm-hmm. Right. We're they all know barking, that. no bite. That's right. what it comes down to. We're so all I, barking, no bite. I got no a question bite. for y'all, right? This question was posed to me a little while ago, and I, was, I don't really have an answer for it, but I don't think there is an answer for it. But do you think a cop becomes an asshole when he, automa- when he joins the force, or do you think that officer gets turned into an asshole while on the job? Well, I got the answer for I, it. I, I believe that some of these cops come in as nice guys. Mm-hmm. And then that environment that they jump into transforms them into whatever that... Right, because it's politics or whatever field you go into. Yeah, because all this training that they get, it comes from people that hated people that look like us. Yes, right. sir. So mm-hmm. they're going to have to transform into that person. And those tactics that they use in the streets... To police us, they're very aggressive. They don't do this with people in Hamilton and, and Lawrence. Yes. And, and York. They don't do this stuff to them. So when they pro- if they approach me for a seatbelt ticket, the guns are drawn. For what? Right. Right. What? Just like just like the gentleman who was murdered in a, in a car in North Minnesota. As the video goes, when the video starts, it was streamed by his girlfriend. He was already shot. He was already shot, and the girlfriend's pleading with the officer, don't shoot my hands. He's telling her, gun's still drawn, by the way. Aimed at him while the guy's already shot. The female says that the guy's girlfriend, hey, he told him he was licensed to carry and it was in a glove. Told him that his registration, he told him to get his registration and license. It was also in the glove. According to the woman in the video, he goes to reach for his license and registration in the glove and the officer shoots him. Not once, not twice, not three, not four, but five times. Overkill. Let me Five ask, times. Let me ask you all a question. To a white man, what is the difference between black people hanging out on the streets in their gang or just in their hood and a black man with his family? There is none. There is none. Because that man had his wife and child in the car, but yet that cop still felt threatened. Didn't you see that's a family so in that car? So you mean to tell me. You still saw a threat. You mean to tell me I'm riding in the car with my girl and my baby, and an officer pulls me over for a, t- a tail light. But so I'm going to shoot this officer while I'm pulled over Speed for a tail away. light with my girl and my baby in the back seat. Where was the threat here? There was no danger. The officer was not in danger. This is this is the spin right here. They are saying that the um, tail light was never broken. Yeah. And wow. Him over because he had a wide nose. We all have wide. Nose. Wow. Right. Right. Black. And they said he fit the description of a robbery suspect. So they said, oh, we had to approach him aggressively because he fit the description of a violent offender. <laughs> so that gave him justification. That's the spin. He's going, that's going to be justified. Oh, right, right. He's getting away with that. Yeah, so, we know that. And, yeah. that's, and that's why we're so outraged. Me personally, I think it started with Zimmerman. Oh, I agree. It started with Zimmerman because it now, took us time to register. Like, wait a minute. He killed this kid. Okay, he's going to. Because we thinking, you kill somebody, you go to jail. That's what our, our thoughts is. And then it kept hitting the news. This guy hasn't been charged. This guy hasn't even been brought in. This guy, wait a minute. What's going on? So here we are. Okay, we're going to prosecute him. We're going to take him to trial. And we're like, we're going to get justice. And then he walks. And then all of a sudden, you start seeing more. You started seeing cops. You started seeing, oh, his music was too loud. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Because they know they're going to get away with it. And you can always say, I was afraid of my life. That's like when he had my man, his hands on the ground. Oh, he's got, how does he have a gun when y'all got both his hands? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you knew he had a gun because you were called out there because someone called them and said, hey, he has a gun. Did y'all hear it was a homeless man who called 911? It was a homeless guy. Yeah, I didn't hear that. That's crazy. Where did he get the phone from? He asked for money. You <laughs> asked ask me. You, you ask I don't me. think they make pay phones no more. <laughs> That's crazy. You, know you asked me for money. I show you my gun. I can see that. Not saying that he didn't or did, but I can see that. Hey, listen, get away from me. You've been bugging me every time I'm on my stand. Yeah. The owner of the store know I'm here. He don't got a problem with me. But I'm on my post. I'm trying to sell my CDs. Can I get some money? No, get out of here. Listen, when that homeless man called and said it's a big black dude with a gun, he the, was The alert went was, off automatically. He was dead. When he's when they when that, when that call was made, yeah, he was there he when was that call dead. was made. Cause like uh, it's 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 crazy, man. What do you say, right? This I've been yo know, Facebook has been a fucking mess all week, yo. Of course, everybody when things like this happen, everybody's a social activist, right? What do you say to the black people who say that we have to stop black on black violence in order for them to respect us and not kill us? They got to see the bigger picture. For one, anytime if for example, if I was to kill Ernie or kill Jay or kill Jarrell, my black ass is getting locked up. Facts. Like, Mat- like, Automatically. Y- y- y'all family Facts. is more than likely is getting justice. Obviously, y'all not coming back. But 
the justice system, you know what I mean? Like the legal proceedings, I'm still getting my black ass locked up. If a white cop is killing black folk, they're getting off scot free. You know what, too? Yo, we just, we had a conversation. I kind of want you to uh, uh, allude to it a little bit now. Why your brother, you said, made a a, 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 a living change from mm-hmm. from from one Blanks place Bro, to another. New Jersey, and Why? they came down to Trenton down in December. Now. In, in, in your mind, it goes, well, who, who would move from Plainsboro to move the train? You know what I'm saying? If you compared the communities. But can you tell them why your brother left? <clears throat> we just got a, got into a habit of getting harassed by the police force down there in Plainsboro. And I mean, like, you know, obviously moving from Piscataway, New Brunswick area, to going to Plainsboro, you're kind of thinking that it's an upgrade right. and lifestyle change and all that. But then just being black. Walking down the street, minding my own business, or my brother doing the same thing weekly, you know, week after week, you keep getting harassed by cops. It comes to a point where, like, is it really worth the extra couple dollars that I'm spending to be in this good community if I keep getting harassed? Or I'd rather just cut my losses, come to a you know a community that's not really known for being progressive, but it's on the up because I feel like Trenton in five years is probably going to be a city that's you know booming with um, a lot of industry and a lot of people coming yeah, down here to live. It's a good community, yeah. mm-hmm. but. All the stigma and the, uh, I guess, assumptions that people get when they hear the name Trenton kind of shies people away from it. But right. my brother, since they made that move in December, his family, two boys and his wife, it's been the best move they made. And, and Comforting. Good. In addition to that, <clears throat> you have black people with that uh, Willie Lynch mentality. mentality. Oh, yeah. 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 It feels as though black people are supposed to be on their best behavior in front of white people. Right. Yeah, Why yeah. do you act like that? Why are you so loud? Why do you do this? Like, we're supposed to, okay, all right, you won't get whipped if you act like this. You won't get stoned if you act like this. Well, not, no, I'm not acting on my best behavior for anybody. I agree with myself. all that. Absolutely. I, I respect people, but you're not just going to have me shucking and jiving. Just to please you. Yeah. For their standards. Yeah, like, That's only going to last five seconds. I'm not doing that. I, I just, I'm arguing on Facebook, right? I'm like, yo, I don't know if you know, but officers swear an oath. Before you take that job, you swear an oath to you swear an oath to protect and serve. Yeah, does this look like protecting and serving? No, you, you got to look out, for, uh, officers. Yeah, you got to look out for yourself too. All right, absolutely understood. Like nobody wants to fucking die. Nobody wants to die. But at the same time, if there's not a reason for you to have that gun drawn, if there's not a reason for you to fire, if there's not an immediate threat, what are you doing? Hey, let me know what y'all think of this. In your community, let's go with Trenton. There's blacks and Latinos here. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't there be black and Latino cops? Definitely. Absolutely. No white cops. Cops where should they, reflect the community. Where do they live? Where Hamilton. Are these, where do these Robinsville, white cops from? Where do these Heights white firefighters Town. live? Communities right? that don't reflect the so communities this way, that they're working in. You don't got to worry about being afraid of me because you're protecting your own. Yeah. Right? right? You ain't got to worry about it. If you're yeah, afraid right. of a black... Listen. <laughs> like, you're, you're like... I think cops are... Most of them are the KKK. <laughs> I think so. I think that, so to go off that question, like, do cops forget or whatever, they get brainwashed, yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them put on a badge, they take off the, because growing up, we only seen the KKK if we read it or heard stories about them, yeah, which made it. us think it was gone. Now, I talked last week about how bad social media is, but what social media also does is lets us know they're still here, walking amongst us, shaking our hands, smiling social media at us. says a lot of light on a lot of shit. But then they put on a costume. And they show you who they really are. These guys are really the KKK. I've seen, a, I've seen a meme on um, Instagram or something like that on the internet where it was like, you know, you wonder why the KKK wears hoods? Because after they take those hoods off, they go back to being your lawyers, your police officers, and your true. doctors. Right. No, so they hide right. their identity with hoods because right. they go back, back and do their regular public service shit after they get finished being fucking racist in a kumbaya meeting. Hey, right? Oprah Winfrey owns her own television network, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. I believe we should have our own news outlet on the station. Can't be BET, because even though it's black entertainment television, it's owned by a white man. But I think Oprah actually owns something. She does. I think because at the end of the day, we can complain about CNN every time it's white media. They're going to tell you how they see it in their eyes. We, we, We get mad. No, CNN, you're lying. That's that's their world. We can't have it. You know what was crazy to me, right? Anytime, even with Alton Sterling down in Baton Rouge, you saw he was murdered, but yet when the news reports it and they're talking about him, they have a mugshot of him. Oh, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Hold whoa. on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. They use a they use a mugshot of him as if he's a victim. No, no, excuse me, as if he's suspect. the one as he's the suspect, as if he's the one that did something wrong. So fast forward to 
the Dallas shooting of the police officers and the snipers, when they figured out and identified who was the person that was killing the officers. Allegedly. Allegedly. They used a, a, a picture of him showing black power mm-hmm. with, with his fist in the air, on. with the dashiki on. <laughs> I've never in my life ever seen them use that image for any other black man that was murdered and try to use it in a positive sense. But now since this guy allegedly is the one that killed these cops, they use this image to promote that. Listen, when, what, I, when I got from it, when I saw it, it's like this is a result. This is why we have to. Uh, uh, have these officers go out and do what they're doing because black people who are strong and they're black and they're black communities and actually show that love to their culture. This is what they do. This is what they do when shit, when shit goes wrong. So you have to put them down. This is what we don't want. Let me t- also tell you what they put out this morning. I've seen it and I automatically unfollow media takeout. I've been unfollowed. Those I never followed them. Yeah, I took them off. They, <laughs> they got a video of my man smoking weed with his wife and his daughter. Who? Do that they kill? Yeah, the which, which one? Oh, okay. They now got a video of him smoking weed. And so we ask him, what does this have to do with anything? But this is what they do. This is what I mean about the media. We need our own. We can't keep watching because they're going to keep putting it out there. And then I seen something the other day. I think his name is John Walsh on Twitter. Oh. He say... John, the he, America's Most Wanted dude? No. Not, it's, it's nah, a he's a dude. former... Um, he's a representative. He said... A it house is, of representatives? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said it is a now Republican. war... Against on Obama o- and all Obama that. Yeah. and the Black Lives Matter. That's what he said. Like Y'all tweeted. killed four cops. Tried to delete it. Right? Wow. But the second a black kid, this is the thing, the second a black kid is murdered or a black man is murdered and we want justice, if we say the wrong thing, this is why the Black Lives Matter because you guys are violent. Like if something happens. But this guy can go and say, it's a war on the, it's president. A war on the president. I thought he was the highest in this country. So y'all put cops... Over the hey, president? Yo, don't you get uh, – no, isn't that a, a felony for threats against the president? Oh, yeah, they they, 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 um, they said it because he tried to delete the tweets. But by then, you know, you can't delete anything on Twitter. Right. They can't, Twitter can get subpoenaed for them to cough up those, those tweets. They probably right? won't, though, because at the end of the day, like, you know, it comes back to the same point. We're not, we're not financially independent right. of others. And like Jay said earlier, you know, when you hit them where it hurts, you shut down stores, you boycott stores or whatever – Then they'll wake up. But they kind of know through all these years that things have been happening, black folks in this country are all bark and no bite. This is not the first time it's happened. I mean, Emmett Till happened in 1955. (laughs) Rodney King happened in 92. Plain and simple. Amadou Diallo got shot at 41 times in New York in 99. And the cops got off, right? Cops got off. All all got got off. All four Have you seen, since, since since killings and social media and the police brutality has become a big thing and to where everybody with a cell phone can see what happened, has any of these officers been convicted in so. any situation? No. Here's Not my, a single officer. Here's my question. If somebody is getting attacked by the police, are you recording it or are you helping? I have a, I have a story on that. Okay. Now, I was living in Elizabeth, right? Um, this is probably like two years ago now. I'm up late night, like going to the bathroom real quick, and I hear a noise outside of my house. I hear like the cops stomping some dude out. So I rushed downstairs, and I, like, peeked through the blinds. It was dark, like 2 o'clock in the morning. I peeked through the blinds, and I see, like, five officers just just boots to the ribs. This dude told me he can't breathe, he can't breathe. I had my phone out, but I didn't record it because I already knew that, you know, if they see that flash coming from this house, they're knocking on my door. They're probably going to knock right. my ass out. Right. So that's, like, the fear of myself that, at the end of the day, I didn't have that bravery you know what I mean? Looking back on it, yeah. that I wish I would have had. I think that's what it is. It's the bravery. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. Um, it's like a suicide mission to yeah. go help somebody. If the cops is on yeah. you, you know you're gonna die if you try to go help. We're not gonna help one another, or but, put my neck on the line for see, somebody else. I don't that's, know. That's that's what I'm talking about. The cops, um, they they put this thing out there with white people and say the black community has this protocol where they say no snitching. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But police don't snitch on each other at all. Mm-hmm. Right. I had this conversation. Two way, two way street. They they, but two they want information from you to lead to something else. Right. And another thing with the cameras, if you have an officer killing a suspect, whatever they call him, a suspect, I'm gonna call him a victim. Talking to the they're gonna say They're gonna say, "Oh, um, let's get all the facts. Let's get the beginning first, because this 
you know, possibly not the whole film. But if you walk into a store and rob it and it's two seconds of a film, you're going to fucking jail. They say, oh, that's definitely him. Mm-hmm. But if it's a cop killing somebody, say, we don't oh, know the whole story. We don't know what happened. The story doesn't. I actually tweeted that recently to us. Since when is video footage not enough? To tell if somebody's guilty or not, since one, that, because now it's it's not it doesn't tell the whole story. Isn't that what sense. I was talking about yesterday though? Yeah. What makes them? Because I I told him about the Ferguson situation. I don't know how many of y'all seen this video. They killed this young man, left him there for dead. Well, like he Brown. died. He left him there, right? Mm-hmm. And the cops and they and they marched, and the cops had to stand there, and that was this black man. And this lady walked. The black lady walked up to him and said, "You know you're wrong, brother." But he stood there like a statue. Mm-hmm. He knew that this officer. Killed a black kid, but he still stood there and protected the other white officers. And they say, "Well, hey, do you leave your job with a pension of ninety five thousand? Which I think they don't. They don't make that. But do you leave your job or do you stand up for what's right?" They ask, "What would I do? I'm going to stand up. It ain't right." But that's it, rare. Yeah. That's a rare. It is. But that's you a gotta rarity. look at like. <laughs> it's to the point where like, I know Jared asked this question, right? Like. Police officers are, are they sw- they're sworn in to protect and serve, mm-hmm. but it comes back to the point where are we truly citizens? So are they protecting and serving? Because if that's the case, if we're not really citizens in the in the eyes of the majority, then they're protecting and serving because they're protecting and serving the majority. And that goes back to the whole whoever you know what I mean? whoever slavery. we were three right. fifths of a, of a like what kind of nonsense is that? Yeah, that's that, that's you know hundred percent true. Because, it comes back to that. Like uh, this is a threat. Your skin is a right. threat. And if something happened to you, instead of you being a victim, they're going to say, oh, he has seven traffic tickets. Yeah. In He's 2004. They're going to dig you know what up what everything that you've done since birth. And then, then and they, like you said, like they, they had the video of my man in North Minnesota. I can't pronounce his name right. Well, I can't. I don't want to. Philando Castile, I think. Philando Castile? I think yeah. so. Some, right? I, pardon me if, you know what I'm saying, any uh, pronunciation errors, but. Just like you said, they had a video of him smoking weed. Well, what that has nothing to do with this current situation. So you bringing up a rap sheet from 2009 when this man was murdered in 2016. All right, so as far as I can tell from 2009 to now, this man's been an upstanding citizen. Why are you... This man works with kids. With kids. He has a legal gun permit. And, and that's another thing. Yo, if, you, if, you're in a, if you're a police officer in a state where it's... People are licensed to carry. You should be very familiar with pulling people over that have guns and permits. Why this officer was so trigger happy? Uh, was this his first pullover? Was it was it his first? Detail? He was trigger happy because the law and the rules don't apply to us. Never well, right. If he was pulled over fifty two times, he was being targeted. I don't care what you. That's say. what they said. He's pulled over fifty two times. And what times? Uh, what kind of times, man? It's probably within three years. Wow. wow. Yeah. yeah. So he was being targeted. It was no question. I got a question for y'all. When's the last time y'all got pulled over, and what happened in that situation? Mm. Sheesh. Uh, um, you know what? I I made a slight turn. Like I made one of them. I don't know if y'all know where that circle at. When y'all like going on Route One, it's like McDonald's, Brunswick Circle. The Brunswick, Brunswick Circle. circle. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that you had to turn on your signal to make that slight turn. Nobody uses it. Keep mm-hmm. in mind. But I got pulled over. I mean, I do, but you knew. Yeah, I did. Nobody knows. <laughs> I got pulled over, and um, I also had my license was suspended at the time. But my, I say that to say this: I've always just naturally been on my best behavior. I don't give them the opportunity. Or a reason. I, or a reason to, you know, even though I'm a big black guy, I think I'm more of a threat because of my size and mm-hmm. my skin color. All of that goes in the, all of that goes in the factor. Right. So I've never, no matter how many times, I've been in the station plenty of times. You've always heard, hey, he's a good guy. Let him go. I've heard that. So at the end of the day, I don't have a bad story to tell. I just know I did my part too. Right. So if anybody else got a story, like that's all because, like I say, traffic tickets, speeding or whatever, I got pulled over. Nobody never disrespected me. I was on my best behavior. But that don't mean that me being on my best behavior was why I survived or nothing happened. But it's also our area. Right. It's also our area. You don't really – I think we had a situation last year or two where a kid was murdered. By Tamir Rice. Right. No, excuse me. Was that, the, was that his name in Trey? That wasn't his name in Trey. Uh, he was shot or killed. He was shot, right? Uh, Red Eyes Hearns. That, that, that sounds th- like it I is. I think yeah. so. I can't really remember, actually. Um, 15. Yeah. 15 years old, Yeah. Man. So but he had like a toy gun or something like that, a BB gun or something like no, that. Oh no, no, no! I, re- I only read the article. I this didn't get is, the full story. This, this is this is what I got from it. It said they seen him walking. 
he was just, you know, typically suspect. Right. And um, they went to pull him over. They got out all aggressive. He said he hopped out of a um, unmarked police van. Mm-hmm. And you don't know. In Trent, that could be the stick-up guys. You don't know. So they said he ran. They said as he ran, he pulled out a weapon, turned back, and shot at him. Said they shot back, shooting him. So hours go by. They bring out all these lights, and they said they found a gun. By um, he was shot by North Twenty Five, and they said they found a gun by the school, by um, by my uh, 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 yeah yeah by yeah, the that's that's impossible right mm-hmm. exactly so and, and that's not his gun. You shot that boy on purpose because you wanted to, and they released a fifteen year old's picture to the media, but never told us who the cop was that shot him. Whoa! You, you can't release a fifteen year old's picture to the media. He's a yeah, minor. Yeah, you can't. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. Aren't aren't cops trained to shoot but not kill? No, no, no I think they train to shoot to kill. the kill. They train to kill. They train to shoot the kill. Okay. If they use it, they got to. No I got a, I got a point. Right? Unload the clip, though? Nah, that's a little sense. That's overkill. Yeah, okay. that's I mean, you know, yeah. If it's justifiable, they, they anything is justifiable at this time. Okay. Whatever it takes. That's, that's I don't know if y'all saw the second video from um from the Allen Sterling. I sure did. When the cop, you know, when the cop shot, killed him. He and pulled then the phone out of his pocket. the phone or pulled the phone out talking about, you know, shots fired. And he was panicking on the phone after he killed him. Like you, you weren't panicking while you were shooting. So why, like, all right. of a sudden you're going yeah, to now this you're big going act. to this dramatic mode and like, put your you, Hollywood yeah, face on. Crazy, and now yeah. you want to draw up tears and who, get this dramatic who, expression. This man was on his really back. Mistake. Y'all had both his two. It's two cops. Two big ass cops. Two cops. First of all, when it first started, yo, they were just having a conversation. The first cop lunged at him as if like they were in a fight. There was no yeah. kind of aggression before that. The first cop lunged at him. And he's like, yo, what you doing? Like, obviously, like, he not going down. He's trying to resist going down because you have no reason to be tackling him. Then they get him down to the ground. I can see one officer has his knee on his neck, mm-hmm. applying hella pressure. And the other officer, I can't really tell what he's doing, but you can tell he has advantage over this guy. You knew he had a gun before you got there. Then you yell, he has a gun in the video, and then you shoot him. And then after he was shot and you released him, you, we can see you pulling the phone, the gun out of his pocket. I, it looked like he had like on cargo yeah, shorts or something like yeah, that. Yeah. You can see you pulling the gun out of his pocket. If he had a gun and he was getting ready to use it, wouldn't it be in his hand at the time when you shot him? They yeah. justified it, but they were probably hoping that nobody was going to see that second video. Yeah, you know that I mean? that That's second video thing. tore me up. That second one was crazy. The first one was bad enough when you know the lady turned the camera away. You just hear the shots, right? But then when you see the video of him actually getting shot, yeah, that and was, you see that's the cops' gruesome. reaction to it. I mean it. We need separation. We do. We don't need them policing us. They can't do it. We do. How many centuries? <sighs> this ain't something new. More than enough. Man. Yeah, it ain't going to change with them. I Boy. also think I also think the mentality with black people got to change, too. This whole fuck the police attitude is really not the way to go. It's really not the way to go. If you want, if, if we want to be policed better, then more of us have to be policed. But if you're teaching your kids, fuck the police, why would they want to become cops? No, uh, exactly. you, you know, um, <clears throat> my son. He spoke about becoming a police officer. But I'm like, you know, I'm not going to keep him from, you know, deterring his dreams. So I'm like, tell me why. And he told me he want to help the community and help people. That's what we need. But when you get into that. You, it's the politics you got to deal with yeah. when you get inside. So, so I think it takes, it has to be more. It has to be more. It can't just be one or two. It has to be in abundance. It has to be a couple, five or ten, which is fucking you, you, rare as hell. You got to push the old dogs out. Right. Because and they collecting these pensions and shit, and they sitting there not doing no work, stack of paperwork as as high as as a as a six foot NBA player on a desk, and shit just gets swept you under talking, the rug. You talking about doing no work? I had my car stolen in Newark um, in November, so I went to the precinct or whatever, and they were real like lackadaisical with me about helping me, like filing my you know stolen car report yeah. and all that. Same thing with me. And I got much, carjacked. Pretty much, like I didn't get carjacked, but yeah. like I went to the gym to go work out in North, right by my house when I was living up there, and um, somebody ran off my book bag that had my car keys in it and my phone. So I rushed to the crib, you know, canceled my bank card, mm-hmm. called the cops, you know, reporting what happened. My car was still parked right by the gym, so I went to the precinct to say that you know my car is here. I don't have my key. I'm gonna have a spare key made tomorrow and come back up and get it. Just monitor the situation. Right. I come back up the next day, my car is gone. So I go back to the precinct. The dude that was like helping me. He starts laughing. He's on the phone with, like, a transmitter or something. He's like, man, pardon me, bro. I got to go to the bathroom laughing. What? Whoa. Wow. Man, straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Whoa. What year so was then, You said it was his, this, this past November? November? Yeah. Wow. So then I get a call a week later 
from um, Montville Police Department. I don't know where this is at. but Montville Police? Yeah, somewhere up North Jersey. They call me saying, did North Police contact you? I'm like, no. They're like, oh, we found your car total. So, one, that that's, that, wow. that town contacted North. Let them know. And North was supposed to go get my car and alert me that the car had been found. They never did it. So, like, three days passed by, you know what I mean, when all this was happening. And then I'm out of a car because y'all, y'all they don't was take lazy that, for their job. They was taking their job. job. Wow. But then when y'all need help in those communities that really need policing, you we wonder why people are not going to be helping you. See, that's the stuff that's not going to happen in Bloomfield. Never will. Montclair. That's not going right. to happen in Hamilton. Right. Say, this will happen to me. Got carjacked or whatever. And the first thing you know, as a legal citizen, you got to, you know, call your insurance, call mm-hmm. the police report. That's, not, that's normal stuff. So I call the police and they say, um, first thing they say is, um, did you have full coverage? I'm like, no, I had liability. It's yeah, my car. I own it. So he said, oh, I'm maxing because sometimes people report cars stolen to get insurance money. I'm like, bro, we wasting time. Yeah, right. Where is life? You, yeah. I don't. You're not my lawyer, bro. I'm reporting an a incident yeah. that I need you to help me you with. You're not my, my lawyer. Keys, they got everything. So they took me to the station, asked me the same stuff again. Are you trying to get an insurance claim? Wow. That, that That's what wow. you got to put up. Right. Here. You got to put up with that. And see, that, that, that go back to my point where the mayor, he hires the chief of police. Mm-hmm. And the chief... He creates that atmosphere. Whatever he wants to happen in the community, he projected onto his police, and that's what they project. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that's what they put out there. So we we got to push this mayor out, this chief of police out, and we got to get more black and Latino police in there that's not going to follow that old standard that we've been used to growing up. Talk about your movement. True, right? Yeah. So Yes. Yeah. In um, 2015, when the kid, um, Radaz Hearns, was shot, I was pissed off about it. Okay. Now, my thing is accountability. If he did some bullshit, he needs to be held accountable for it. Yeah. But the way the facts came out, I'm not blind. I'm going to look at both sides, the police and the victim. So the, the facts wasn't adding up. I said, you know what? This this officer was wrong, and they, they protecting him, and they releasing it. this young kid information they shouldn't be. There's something foul going on. So I said, all right. I put a call out to Facebook asking people who want to stand up and do something. I got a, I got a big response. And um, I made a private group. And then eventually down the line, I said, you know what? I'm not just going to base this organization on him. I want to get kids like him out of the streets, get them educated, give them some trades, you know, all that kind of stuff to get them out of the streets. That's why we held the Christmas event, the Halloween event. We had children's programs going on. And right now we're trying to get a building to get these kids some trades so they could, you know, right, have something to do, earn a living, and get yeah, out. You know, something right. to do. Because it's a lot of a lot of people. When I was coming up, the thing to do for for kids who was doing what I was doing was play basketball. All mm-hmm. we wanted to do was play ball. Yeah. It don't matter where, what park, if it was if it was outside, which mainly it was because it wasn't a lot of buildings geared towards people after high school to go to these open gyms and just play ball. You had to have some kind of registration to a gym or something like that. Yeah. So. If you can't play ball outside, if the weather wasn't permittable, you, you, you was pretty much stuck. You basically, and that's, you get idle time on your hands, and that's when bullshit happens. Mm-hmm. You need more programs and more buildings geared towards people who are trying to do something better. Not just the kids in the school are important, too, so got to cater to them, but you have to cater to the kids who are in between high school and adulthood, college or whatever it is they're trying to figure out. You can't just throw them out into life and say, hey, here you go. It's not that transition, especially for inner city urban kids, that transition into from high school into trying to find a job, a career, it doesn't happen overnight. Not everyone wants to know what they want to do with themselves directly after high school. It takes time to figure out yourself, to learn yourself, what you're comfortable with, what you do and you don't want to do. In the midst of that happening, kids fall into some bullshit. It's a learning curve. Yeah, by the time you figure out what and you want to do. by the time you figure it out, you done got yourself in a you whole a mess of shit. You know what I'm saying? You done got yourself into a whole mess of shit because there aren't programs instilled for inner city kids to go to where they can be creative and do things that will keep them off the street. Do y'all see, do y'all be around at like 5 o'clock when the state workers get off? Yeah. Where they going? PA. PA. On, on the highway. Mm. But they got New Jersey state jobs. Mm. Mm-hmm. The highway be packed. You can't even move. The highway's at 5 o'clock. When you're trying to get to where you need to be, you can't go because the state workers is trying to get back to PA where they live. But mm. they take jobs from the state of New Jersey. 
Yeah, and they they so cheap at times they won't even pay the dollar for the toll. For the they toll, they want yeah. Oh exactly. yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And I'd be stuck like you're stuck either way because the toll be backed up and the side road be backed up. Mm-hmm. Like you say, all you gotta do like y'all don't got the um easy pass, right? You understand what I'm saying? Like, don't y'all want to get out of Trenton as fast as possible? Right. I was also hearing about it's um up the street on Chestnut behind the other houses. They're gonna start building like um not what a houses? community, huh? What houses? If you go up Chestnut, like if you walk out this house here, go up Chestnut, it's this area that says do not enter because you can't drive that way. You can only come down. Oh, okay. If you actually oh, go you make behind this right. it, it's some houses behind. Oh, yeah, behind. yeah, yeah. Basically, uh-huh. Monmouth. If you go behind Monmouth, right. right there is some homes. I'm hearing that they're going to build some houses so that the people that work for the state can just go from here to there, which wow. I don't understand how they're going to do it because this is still the hood. Wow. It's got to be a lot of cleaning up that you're allegedly going to do. But so right behind the No Hunter block, then right, right there, right? Exactly. Yeah. But they want the state workers to be able to go from here to the train station, mm. and then back. Who's 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 uh, in charge of this program? They just built some houses on. Um, it's another housing uh, complex over the bridge on Monmouth. What's that street? We was talking about it yesterday. Uh, Rush Crossings. R- R- them. Yeah, Rush Crossings. Right. They just built a little community over there, and they was having a meeting. And this is what I heard through the grapevine of what his plans are. And he's going to build houses all over for the state workers. Well, first of all, we got all these problems with police and everything like that in New Jersey. We, the fucking governor is a mess. Yeah. <laughs> the fucking governor is a mess, dog. And then on top of all of this racial tension in the country and on top of all the kids being murdered, the black kids being murdered, and then now these police officers being murdered. In a few months, we got to fucking decide between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And I don't think either one of them is ready for that. What the hell is going on? How is this going to get better if we have to vote for one of them? But my thing with it is, I don't care who's in there. Look look what they're doing when Obama's in. Uh, they ain't going to care true. about us no matter way. Who, that is listen, true. I'm, I'll be honest with you. Who, it doesn't matter. Like, my vote, I'm not, I'm not going to vote. It ain't going to matter. I'm not voting either. It ain't going to matter. Like, we've been so disrespected when a black man got in, more than, more than ever or so we feel that way. They're killing us in cold blood, and we look, and we saying, hey, Obama, say something. I know a lot of people was upset when Obama signed that blue, that blue he alert. He had to. He, but he had to. It's his job. He his, had to. He can't, he can't, yeah, like, I don't know if people know or not, but the president can only do but so much. Like, he can't just say, hey, this is what's going to happen, and it fucking happens. He can only do but so much. He has bills and legislatures and all type of shit he got to go through in order for something to be implemented. He fucking fought for Obamacare. Like he was a, he, he, they wasn't giving him that. They, they yeah, tried to tear him down that. over it. He he was appeasing a, a certain group of people because no matter the Blue Lives Matter bill you sign, nothing is going to change. Right, mm-hmm. it's us that's being hurt out here. Now they say statistically, more white people are being killed by the police. Which and, is true. But statistically, more white people are killing police. That's true. But we're the thugs. Right. They don't have to make new laws when they mm-hmm. when it when they when white people are killing cops. But if, if you do it, yeah. Oh, we got it. It's just a national tragedy. Speaking you know of that, speak, speaking of that, I seen a um a meme where it said four hundred and something white people were murdered by cops, and only two hundred and something were killed by were were killed were black were killed. Like they're trying to say, hey, cops kill more whites and. And there was like 300 un- unidentified, unidentified, whatever that means. Whatever the here's whatever my thing. Yeah. If 400 white people have been murdered by the police, then you white people need to stand up and take charge. Because obviously, he either they either deserved it, they did something wrong, they implemented that, you're telling or me, you just don't give a shit. What you t- hey, they kill us too. That ain't right. That, that right. make you right. Okay, so just because they kill y'all and you might not want to stand up and say something about it, we're supposed to like fall in line. Got nothing to do with me. They don't see That's it though. That's the thing. We, they don't black see Black people, we have a sense of brotherhood and sisterhood. Right. I'm connected to you somehow. Right. Some way. I was not, saying the same not, thing. Not necessarily by blood, by you know mentality. We there. Now you got white people that 70, 77 percent of the population, allegedly, and they say that we're thirteen percent. So if they kill two hundred of us. Take us out that pot and four hundred of them, and put the rest of them in jail. Yeah, I mean that, that's a drip. This right here, that's a tragedy. Yeah, man. right. That's a thirteen percent. You know, what you're, taking, I was you're taking a that. large percentage of that of that uh, yeah. uh, that culture away. Yeah. So you're not leaving much left, especially when you're killing uh, a certain percentage and then you're putting another percentage in jail. And Ernie, to add on what you were saying, that's why cause I I said that to myself. Like that's why I feel when something happens in Ferguson, something happens in Minnesota, some I feel it. 
Yeah. It's not that many. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's yeah. not, not that many of them. Because at, at the end of the day, it, 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 could, it, could literally, it could literally be one of your friends. It could literally be you. It could be your brother. It could be your sister. And it's or to son. Be justified. And it's yeah. going to be justified by some bullshit. They're going to find a picture of somebody smoking weed. And say, oh, he's a bad guy. All black people smoke. Shirt. Oh, he's in a gang. Or All he black had drink. gang members. Or he had a traffic ticket. He's That's aggressive. Right. Yeah, I'm not but it's because like they don't see it. Like anytime, anytime you turn the news on, whether it's ABC, CBS, NBC, CNN, nine times out of ten, the murders that are shown is at the hands of black folks. Yeah. If they're killing blacks or if a black is killed, they yeah. never show you a white. A white you don't never see a white no, video. Of, I mean, a video yeah. of a white person getting killed. Just like you don't now. ever hear we people say see it's getting killed. Just oh, like yeah. you don't ever hear so, people say white on white crime. And never speak on it. And, it, that's, and that's I was that's arguing with my thing. mom about it, too, because yeah. I feel like there's a generational divide, too, with black yeah. folks. And it's not that we don't respect our elders, but it's like they kind of like want to live in a cocoon and make it seem like yeah, it's just that, our generation. That's true. But at the same up. time, I, was, I made a point to this yesterday. For most of us in this age group that we're sitting in right here, there, was, there wasn't a lot of father figures from the 60s to bridge that gap. That's true. Yeah. Once shit went bad in the 80s, we Prison was pretty much drugs. left to figure this shit out yeah. for on our own so, mm-hmm. and for my mothers and our yeah. aunts and our grandmas. Black there was no older black man to bridge that gap to, to take that mentality from the 60s of a Malcolm X or a Muhammad Ali right. and, 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 and teach that and yeah. give that tutelage down to the youth. Right. That's no why there's a lot though. of lost motherfuckers. It's, not, it's no coincidence, though, because at the end of the day, I think about this Reaganomics. all the time. Me being yeah. like me being from a different culture. Obviously, my family's from Cameroon, Central Africa. I was born and raised here, yeah. but my cousins do like see things that like they they don't understand the, the plight that I go through, that my brother's gone through. Because you know we come to the house and we have a different teaching at home than we do going to school. You know what I mean? In school, I'm just a regular black nigga, pretty much. Right. You know what I'm saying? But when I get home. My parents had, like, an assumption coming from Africa that, oh, black Americans are not good. You feel what I'm saying? So I can count on one hand how many black friends my parents really had growing up. Wow. That weren't of ethnic descent. Nah, right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when you yeah. look across the globe, it's puzzling to me that the black person on this planet is the only person that doesn't have a universal language. You all true. speak another race's language. You yeah. feel what I'm That's saying? That's true. Yeah. Whether it's in Africa, like, my first language is French. Yeah. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like... You come here, we don't have a native tongue. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We don't so even have our own names. names. The, op- the oppressor is never going to understand the plight of the oppressed because you've never been in that position. No exactly. matter how much you try to sympathize and, oh, I feel your pain or whatever, unless you go through the burdens that we went through, you're never going to understand it. God damn it, give me a high five, so, man. You know I mean? Got that it's knowledge on the ass, man. The they don't, they but they don't, they don't want to like, they don't want to embrace that or accept that because who, who in their right minds would want to wake up and go through what black folks have gone That's through. what I'm saying. The first thing they say is get over it. Now, exactly. now, yeah, so if you speak about slavery, you got to get over it. But but we, we got to remember Pearl Harbor. We got to remember World War One, World War II, um, 9-11. Yeah, oh, we got to remember, remember all of that. The Holocaust, yeah. The, yeah. Especially the Holocaust. They beat us in the head with the Holocaust. all kind of reparations for that. But if I speak about slavery... Oh, I'm just reliving. I'm, I'm, I'm living in the past. But no matter how many college courses I took, I graduated college. When I walk out that door, I know how they look at me. Right. And I'm not even concerned about that. That's why I just go to work trying to make my money and provide for the community. Right. That's it. And we need to speak. Somehow, we need to, like, we need to stop shopping at the Walmarts. We need to stop shopping at every Dollar Tree that they build on every corner now. Every Wawa. Yo, you know, it's funny, yo, now that you mention that. They just built a family dollar out in North Trent, right across from Dolly Homes. Projects. Then, even but even before that, they knocked down Trenton High and built the McDonald's across the street. In five minutes. In, t- in ten minutes, bro. They built the McDonald's. Like, at the same time Trenton High was going down, no matter of fact, the, the McDonald's was up before the school was completely down. Bro, I don't care what anybody says. McDonald's across the street from a high school is poison. Right. Yeah. That's a four-year high school. The, the the ninth graders, what what is it, three, four years? The, the ninth graders are going to be going to lunch there. They're not going to go get a salad. They're going to go get a burger. And by 12th grade, going to have health issues. Yeah, right, There's right. No way around it. They don't understand how the wrong foods, it kind of like shuts down a lot of the, in, the things that's inside of your body, your testosterone, your memory, like your sleeping pattern, everything that you everything that you need, like fast food. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 um, it disrupts all that. It does. It mm-hmm. does. And if you don't know that, only thing you know, because I remember when I was young, McDonald's. We say, oh, why don't we got a McDonald's in Trenton? McDonald's oh, is cool. Right. It was, we did not yeah. know. 
You know what I'm saying? I can always say, hey, if I know now what I knew then, I'd be this and I'd be that. Right. But they know. The people that built the McDonald's know what they was doing. Mm-hmm. They know who they're targeting. Right. Yeah. Plain and simple. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're, we're always going to be targets. I mean, like, right. you look in any hood in Jersey. I've lived in a few. I'm sure everybody here has lived in some. Mm-hmm. Liquor stores are accessible pretty much 24-7. Every corner. You know, you, it's not hard for me to get a weapon if I feel like it. Right. But I bet you you don't see that in white communities like that. You can right. find some salad in the white You know what I mean? You're going right. to find drugs, obviously. <laughs> Good-ass salad, but too. <laughs> that's the main thing. You know, so. Good-ass salad. I see you brought some notes. You get um, get off your chest what you wanted to yeah, bring to the table. Um, you did, too, sir. You got a little pad over there. You got yeah, all your I, points I spoke, off. I spoke my points. Um, Make sure you're talking to the mic, too, Lane. Yeah, I, I, spoke about, I spoke about most of this stuff, but my whole thing was, what I came, I wanted to speak about how they label us as thugs, and statistically, white people commit the most crimes. The but, weirdest fucking crimes yeah. at that. Especially sex crimes. Right. Yeah. Now, my thing is, why are we being painted as the violent thugs, and this was given to us? Right. We were given bullets, whips, and religion. What are we supposed to do right now? We were, we were. Bre- I agree with all that. We were bred this way. Right now, we got to break the chains. We do. What are we going to do about it? Now, people say we need to boycott. I think it's a secondary way to boycott. You got to be proactive. We need to build um, um, farms, stores, and provide people options. If we're not providing options, they're going to go to to to, to the to, piece of shop. Right, they gonna right. Go. And you know, we're addicted to fashion and, yeah. and and hair and the females with the nails and all that stuff. We buying it from them, and every time we buy something from them, they putting it back into their community. Into their community to, to build the suburb, right? And everything we take out of here, we sucking the blood out the community. Look at these houses; they gut it out. Yeah, that property value; these houses probably worth twenty thousand dollars on Walnut. That's it. And Maybe. then on top of that, like you just said, to the point that you made earlier, the houses that they're trying to build for the state workers near the train station. Yeah, did you see the houses in front of that on the No Hunter block? But that's what I was it's saying. It's like twenty houses, but like, like. 17 of them are yeah. abandoned. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So something has to give on the other side because them state workers don't want the hood or the people that live there on the other side of them. So oh, what? Sure. They, they're going to do chase them out? They're going to buy them houses out too? And then now that the value of these houses is down, the landlord not going to care about these houses. Hell no. So, so there's no the repairs going to go down. Right. Yeah, they they did no the same thing in Brunswick. Like you know, they expanded you know, Rutgers University. They kicked out everybody, all the projects they tore down in Brunswick right on 18. Yeah. Built like million dollar condos and townhomes. By George you know. Street? Yeah. Wow. Wow. And obviously, right. you know, Rutgers being a Big Ten school now, the football team is pulling in a lot of money. They're having a lot of, you know, more people with, who are more affluent come down in those communities, and they're kicking out all the black folks pretty much. Sheesh. Yeah, it's known. Um, my, uh, you know, little point I had here, it said uh, blacks are 3.5 times more likely to get shot by the police. For blacks, the chances are 1 in 60,000. For whites, is one in two hundred thousand, and the disparities are um, injustice, housing, education, employment, etc. If we could go back in time and speak about um, redlining that the government put out there for um, certain people, which is usually white people, to get free housing and free land. Now, this stuff was passed on to generations, so this is part of the privilege that they received that they don't like to speak on. Right. Like, all this land and houses that they got, oh, grandpa left this to us, or we um we got insurance and all this stuff, this was given to you by the government. That's welfare. Right. They don't like to speak about that. Mm-hmm. And we were given nothing. They kept us out, that red line. They got everything, and they left us in the dirt. And we still survived. You know what they gave us? They gave the woman a government package and told the woman, oh. Can't no man be in your house. Yes, sir. The man is in yeah. there. You won't get no help. Yeah. And that's what they told us. And it's yeah. all it's, it's all a trickle it's down, It's all about man. the black man. It's like, yeah. all a trickle down. Everything that destroys. Right. Because Everything. we used to have, used to be a man, woman, and child, children in the household. Absolutely. Yo, the 50s yeah. and 60s, was, that's it, what you're it saying. was a family setting. That's what you're saying. It was a family setting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, at, like I said, there was nobody from that time period to bridge the gap of information and, and pass that down. To, to the youth that we have now, which is why a lot of people are in a disarray and they're just fucking they, completely lost. They do that this day. Try to go get a home. Like, send your lady out to go get a home. They're going to ask you how much you make and who's coming with you. More than likely, they're going to come back and say, if you come with me, we make too much money together. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're breaking up the family now. We got the opportunity to own a house, but 
The man and the woman now makes too much money to live in this house. But we qualify for it. Or they even send your kids to school to get a decent uh, amount of financial aid. Yo, y'all make too much money, so now you got to come out of pocket, and the financial aid is going to be is going to be a little lesser on your end because both of your parents combined make this much. So what happens is you don't put mommy and daddy's information on a FAFSA. You pay mommy's because mm -hmm. that half a salary is going to get you more free money from mm -hmm. from the from FAFSA. Right, same no, shit. I just, I mean, my you know my closing point would probably be that it comes back to like we had something very early in our discussion, is that there's nothing wrong with a 9-to-5. Nope. All enough. of us are not going to the NFL or the NBA, no, no matter how nice you are. I mean, we know it, there's players in the hood who are way, you know, who could probably be way better than guys we see on TV. Fact. It, it's all about opportunity. But yeah. at the end of the day, what are we doing to teach our kids that, you know what, there's nothing wrong being a fireman and being in the community, or right. being a police officer in the community, or just being a civil worker. Pretty That's much. what I was saying. I think it starts it now. Grass now it's got to be done from the inside. Like it you have to, to you have to encourage those kids to go towards those activities. Yo, it's more things to do with it, your kids have more options than playing ball and rapping. It's a lot Man. more for them to do. And selling you, dope. you as a parent, you have to expose your kids to these opportunities and show them, hey. Look at Serena Williams. Hey, she's from Compton. She's one of the fucking greatest, like the greatest tennis player, woman tennis player ever. Hell, by between both genders. Her parents provided her that option, her and her sister. You have to show the kids that there's more than what they see going on That's from true. the people in their community so that they can go off into these different fields. Hell, man, architecture. Uh, uh, social work, anything. anything. There's uh, it's an abundance of different anything. activities and majors and, and and professions and careers for people to get in, for black people to get into outside of what you're accustomed to thinking is going to make you rich. Mm -hmm. My closing, my closing point would be Oprah, Michael Jordan. We need our own oh, media Michael outlet. Jordan. Those oh, that God. make, I'm only saying that. I'm only saying that. Those that made it up. Those that made it up. Those that made it up. He's a billionaire. Those that made it up. Oh wait, That's man. What I'm Speaking of which, to, to the point that you made yesterday. So now, like you said, like. We, I think we need, like you said, more action from those bigger names because what happens is they want, they want us to march and, and quit our jobs yeah. and, 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 and protest. The right. But they not putting their neck on the line. No, Bro, you make, you make millions. Why am I going to quit my uh, $14 hour job, you know what I'm saying, no. when you have way more influence and a bigger voice than I have on a bigger stage? You should be taking this, you should be taking this stand more so than an everyday American. Hey, yo. Black American. How many millionaires is it in America? Black millionaires. Do we see any change anywhere? That's because they think giving away a free football or basketball camp is doing something. You're Don't right. Don't get me wrong. You, you coming in the community, you're showing your face. But like I said before, not, not all of us are making it to that high level to meet you there. So you have to kind of throw that money into education and tell these kids that, yo, there's other ways to make it. There's other ways to live comfortably and, and, and have that longevity. You know what I'm saying? And even with education, we, yo – Educate the right the way. The books, the books are bullshit, man. We gotta stop teaching these kids about fucking Christopher Columbus and all this yeah, other bullshit man. that don't mean nothing when they get out of high school that they're not gonna fucking use. Mm -hmm. Yo, we gotta teach kids about taxes. We gotta teach kids about home equities. We gotta teach kids mm -hmm. credit, about credit. You know what I'm saying? Like these are the things that are going to matter when they're out on their own in the real world, trying to make a life for them and their family. I think that every celebrity, I think that there is somebody like we got representation in Trenton. Mm -hmm. That's out there. In every city, every state, there is a celebrity or an athlete that's making millions of dollars. And if that place. one person did something, we'd be something. If one person did something, we'd be something because we need the money. We can't, like I said earlier, yeah, it's so easy to say we need to stop buying this and stop going to these stores. But we need somebody to come in with money because money rules the world. With money and they say, here we go. We're going to help you guys build this and build that. But like you said, like we talked about yesterday, they want us to leave our job to go march and protest for a few days, and then hopefully we can go back to the white man because that's who we work for. Hold on, I want to hear. I want to. Yo, Snook, you got something to say? We got the the the, the OG homie Snook in here. He 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 working the camera right now. I want to know because he just he's actually to allude to your point. He's in the process of buying a home. I don't want to put you out there, bro, but I just did. He's in the process of buying a home. You can tell us about that experience and how it's been working for you. Get your ass over here, man. <laughs> <laughs> G Snook, baby, what's up? Mm, talk right into the mic. All right, what's happening, everybody? Uh, so, so what, what would you like to know about the, the whole buying process? The process, the whole process from start to your current your current point. Okay, so well, before you even project project before you even want to you know consider about you know buying a home, the first thing that you would need to do is get pre qualified. 
you know, to make sure that you can actually afford to do it. Um, after you get the pre-qualification, um, you need to get pre-approved. Thanks for putting me on the spot, too, by the way. You know, you know. <laughs> I'm random. Um, yeah, you need to get pre-approved after you get uh, pre-qualified. Um, once you get pre-approved, you know, you need to reach out to a realtor. Um, that pre-approval shows the realtor that you're serious who you, about Who do you buying. go to to get pre-approved? Uh, you can go anywhere. You can go to a bank. A bank? You know, yeah, you can go to any institution. You just got to do the research. Um, once you get that pre-approval, you know, if you know a, a realtor that, you know, was referred to you by someone, you can um, use that one or you can do some research to, you know, find a realtor. Um, once you get that realtor, you know, it's just a matter of looking finding the right house, spot. finding the right spot. You know, then you got to get the mortgage, you know what I mean, to, to, to finance the house. Well, it's a, it's a lot of paperwork involved, man. Sounds so. like a lot of middlemen. <laughs> a lot right. of middlemen. A lot of middlemen. I mean, you don't necessarily need a realtor, but if you don't really understand the housing market and what you need to do, it's probably best for you to get, get a realtor. But it, So you could be pointing in some kind of direction. Right, right. right. Yeah. So if you're like a first-time home buyer, you know, like myself, you know what I mean? You, you don't really know like what you need to do. So having a realtor is a, is a, is a good way for you to get educated on, 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 on everything. But, um, you know, once you get that realtor, once you find the house, you know, you got to get financing for it. you got to go through the bank. Um, you know, and, you know, after that, just a matter of paperwork, you know what I mean? Got it. Well, congratulations for being in the process of buying your first home, brother. It's my boy, man. I know that dude since eighth grade, man. Lovely wife, great family, man. That's my boy. We got, uh, we got like a few minutes left. We got a few minutes at you on. I want to close, I'm going to close out on something, man. I want to say something. I'm going to call this dig a hole and bury yourself. Dig a hole and bury yourself. So all the people who are not open-minded enough to understand both sides of this situation. There were cops killed this week. There were innocent cops killed this week. There were innocent black people killed this week. All as a result from one event playing off of the other. It's all one big turning wheel. You got to realize you, you, you just can't be happy about people getting killed. I don't understand that mentality. I don't get it. When a life is lost, yo, that life is lost forever. Somebody lost a son. Somebody lost a wife, husband, dad, brother, uncle, whatever. If you can't put your feet in those shoes and relate, then you just don't have a heart. You're, ha you're, you're, you're a less, lesser of a human being. People don't deserve to die unnecessarily for somebody else's mistakes. Hell, for even their own mistakes. Nobody has that right to take anybody's life. If you're out there and you're justifying these killings with one or the other, you're a part of the problem. You need to wake your motherfucking ass up and start fixing shit. With that being said, God damn it, you can dig a hole and bury yourself. No, that was well said. Bury yourself. Yeah. That was well said. That's Fellas, we appreciate everybody coming through. Great conversation. Yo, you can catch us on our, uh, our podcast link, www.soundcloud.com backslash me and my bro. My Bro and Me Podcast. You can catch us on our Facebook page, My Bro and Me Podcast, and our Twitter page, Podcast Brothers. Send any questions or emails that you have to us.